All right. In last video, we went through all Speedwino ECU configurations into the studio, including sensor actuators and tables. However, when I tried to start the engine, it just didn't start. After a while testing and searching, I found that while the engine was cranking, the injector was not opening at all. The injector was working in hardware testing mode, but not when it was really needed. At this time, I started to mess with Tune Studio configurations and using wrong configuration, I was able to set the car idle. I reduced the injector rate from 450 cc per minute to 200 and used huge V values in the idling zone, which is not reasonable. But despite the fact the car was idling, it was only idling very rich and when I reduced the V values, the car was stopped. Now it's time to solve this problem, set a few other things right and then go for a run to start tuning the V table properly. So let's go! As I was building knowledge as I was going with the project, at this point I could not understand if my problem was related to the ignition, injection or both. So at this point I decided to revert all the modifications to stock carburetor, study the sensor signal output in detail, study the stop timing while cranking, idling and accelerating and then modify to injection in a step-by-step -step basis. That is, first I replace the ignition system and then the injection. Back to stock carburetor, I started the car which started immediately, so the problem was not the car, was what I did to it. Of course. I studied the ignition timing while cranking, idling and accelerating and checked the values on the AFR sensor. Everything seemed good, despite the relatively lean readings when I With everything working, I replaced the distributor by the wasted spark coil pack controlled by the ECU and then tried to start the car again. The car had similar behavior, so the problem was not the ignition. However, I found something that, despite I didn't believe that was the problem, it certainly didn't help. The ignition signals sent by the Speedwino are affecting the AFR sensor readings. We can see it in these peaks here. The readings should be something like this, so these peaks might affect the signal readings, causing the ECU to read a little bit richer than it really is. However, these peaks are not found in the logs, so I didn't worry too much for now. If the problem is not the timing, sensing or ignition is related to the injection. I got back to the books and online searching and concluded that despite Speedwino states that low impedance injectors are supported using a current limiting resistor, they might not work properly, especially if they were designed to operate with pick and hold currents. The idea under this is the following. These low impedance injectors require a huge amount of current to open rapidly due to their sizes. However, if they operate always under these currents, they will have short lifetime. And since a lower current is required to keep them open, the pick and hold driver outputs a current signal like this, in which the current has a peak value to slam open the injector and then hold it in a more reduced value to prevent the injector from burning. So, the most affordable solution that I found for this was the LM1949 device which is an injector drive controller specifically designed for this application. In the datasheet, we can find the typical application circuit and the corresponding signal dial. The only problem of using this device with Speedwino is that Speedwino outputs 0 volts when it wants to open the injector and this device opens the injector when the signal input is 5 volts. So I printed a PCB with this circuit, which is divided in this part, aiming to convert the 0 12 volt signal to a 5 0 volt signal, appropriate to the, the controller and the controller itself. I will not spend too much time on this, but message me if you want more details. Then updated the overall system diagram, and if you saw my last videos, you know that here. I just had a one current limiting resistor in series with the injector 
and now I removed the resistor and included the pick and hold control. This is the PCB with the components and its final location. Then I set the injector in hardware test mode and activated it with 50% of the T cycle. With the injector running, I monitored the control pin of LM1949 device so we can establish the injector opening type. Here we can see the peak voltage caused by the peak current that then is reduced and held until it returns to zero. From this test, we can establish that the injector opening time is around 0.8 milliseconds. Finally, I set this information on Tuna Studio and uploaded the original configurations on the injector characteristics and the automatically generated VE tables and magic happen. The car started immediately and despite the rough idle at the beginning, before the VE tuning, it is working. Before taking the car out for a ride and start the VE tuning, there were a few other things to get it right. One of them was the car tachometer. The original tachometer works with signals like this, provided by the negative pin of the ignition coil. And as we replaced that coil with the Wester Spark coil pack, the tachometer didn't work. I found the workaround for this problem in speedwino.com slash forum with very clever solution that uses a relay coil to the same purpose. As I use two ignition signals, one for cylinders number 1 and 4 and other for cylinders number 2 and 3, I use two diodes to join the two incoming signals without shorting the ignition 1 and 2. And as the relay makes a nice opening and closing, I remove the moving part of the relay so it remains inside. Put the things in a PCB, inside the box and that's it. The other thing that I needed to assemble was the air filter box. I decided to make my own, so I mimicked the base with cardboard, then started working on the sidewall. I did a half cut and then bend them into the end. Made the sidewalls into parts, then tack them together. Weld the thing, then cut the holes for the piping and weld the pipes. Cut and weld a frame so it could be the cover support to have access to the air filter. Grind the extra weld for a good finishing. And just when I was preparing to weld the bottom part, I realized that I have welded the cover support on the bottom of the box. Yeah, pay attention to what you are doing. This is me thinking if I can adapt the damn thing, but yeah, you will have to fix it. Fuck it. So I corrected this stupid error, gave it a little paint, and this is how it looks now. I think it's pretty good. And then we went for our first try. For simplicity, I used the auto-tune mode in Tune Studio, which I recommend, at least for unexperienced users like me. The auto-tune will analyze the AFR sensor readings and adjust the VE table so it matches the desired value. This is me exiting my garage and here we find the first problem, the exiting ramp. When the car was unable to climb this ramp, I thought, shit, this thing doesn't work. I was really nervous on this. I actually called a tow to be available because I might need it. I took a deep breath and realized that the car was unable to climb the ramp because it was leaning out. I gave it a few revs and tried it. And no, not yet. I will keep this part long and maybe a little bit boring because I found a few problems before the car started to work well and I want to show you the steps that I took. The only thing that I cut from the video was the moments when nothing happened because I was thinking in what to do. After a little bit of thinking I decided to increase the VE values a bit but I was so nervous that I ended up decreasing the values. Stupid. Another try and didn't even reach the meter, of course. 
then I set the autotune to very easy, so it has a greater permission to change the V values. Waited a little bit, so the values were updated, and try again. If you see here, the car is running lean, and after a while the readings are corrected. Then another try and not yet. Then I started to realize that whenever the RPM too low reached the higher values, the auto tune immediately increased the V values. So I give it a few reps and try it. Then I finally realized that I had to increase the V values for ILO. And then I finally was able to climb the ramp. But when I thought that the problems were ending, the car didn't ride smoothly. The car was stalling very very easy and I was not able to drive. At first, I thought that I only needed to give autotune some time to correct the V values, but after a while, I realized that that would not help. It was very hard to keep the car working while driving because it was running very lean as the fuel load increased. It took me a while to figure it out, so I cut a few parts of this video, but here's what I did. First, I opened the table configuration and set this option to fix it. I noticed that the car was stalling even in idle. Then I tried to set this option no and I found the same behavior. As these weren't working, I set the first option to off and the AFR option to yes and the behavior of the car improved a little bit and I was able to drive it very roughly. Then loaded the original V table before auto tuning, gave it a few revs but that was even worse. And finally set these options. gave autotune some time and drove it. And despite the very lean readings at the beginning, I was able to drive the car. I cruised for a while, keeping the revs low and let the autotune do its job. From this point on, the car starting to ride better as the V values were being updated. During this first autotune session, I always kept an eye on the AFR sensor to make sure that I was not pushing too much on the revs with lean mixture. Also, during this session, I was using a narrowband AFR sensor, so the readings were something like this, quickly oscillating from lean to reach values. After a while, I was becoming confident to push a little bit more by the engine and I started revving it up. After the 
40 minutes drive and this was the final Vite. Despite the car was running very smoothly at the end of the auto-tuning ride, I was a little bit unsure with these VE values over 100. I thought that they might be related with the inaccuracy of the AFR sensor. Later, I installed a wideband AFR sensor with the tiny WB controller and repeated the auto-tuning ride with similar results. So, values over 100 it is. Finally, I opened the VE table and manually changed the VE values that were not properly corrected by the auto-tune, namely this region. And then went to a closed road to push a little bit more for the edge. And I did a few runs like this, logging the data from the EC. To be honest, I'm a little bit worried that the injector that the cycle is reaching its maximum value very easy. Perhaps something is wrong with the injector characteristics. I will have to revisit this later. Finally, I just want to show you that you can see the Tuner Studio logs with Megalog Viewer. But if you don't have the full version, you can only analyze logs with a few samples. So I developed my own program that allows to analyze the ECU log data over time, including the analysis of the cell that are running lean or rich, so we can adjust the VA table cells manually. And that's it! I have a few details to optimize, namely the injected at the cycle, and I'm not extracting all the power from the engine since I'm using a very conservative ignition timing table. But if you saw my first video, I did a speed test and currently the car is taking almost the same time to reach the 100 km per hour mark. So at least I'm not losing power. Currently I'm having some difficulty to decide the next step. On the one hand, we are more or less ready to install the supercharger, which is the final goal of this project. But on the other hand, the optimization of the ignition table will bring some power to the engine. And I discovered this device that along with the NOx sensor could be used to optimize the timing table. I need to think a little bit about this. Either way, that's it for now. Stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to leave your comments and subscribe for upcoming videos.